Hey people, what's going on? Today we are back with another new app write database feature and we call it spatial columns. Spatial columns allow you to store real world geographical data in your database in the form of points, lines, and polygons. Spatial columns are very useful in case you want to store locations in your app write database and later query them. The reason we launched this feature is because if you store your locations as strings in your database, you're gonna have a big trouble querying them later on. So we have put in the hard work to make it easier for you to deal with spatial data. So in this video, I will show you how you can set up spatial columns in your app write database. And I'm also going to show you an app I built by using spatial columns. So yeah, let's get started. All right. So here we are in our app write console. Let's go ahead and select our project spatial columns. And here I'm going to go to databases and I'm going to go ahead and click on create database. I'm going to name it e-commerce and I'm going to go ahead and hit create. Perfect. And now we're going to go ahead and create our first table which is going to be stores. So this table is going to store all the store names and all the locations. So yeah, let's go ahead and click on create. Perfect. Now let's go ahead to the columns tab and let's add the columns we need for this to work. So the first column we need is actually the name of the store. So I'm going to type in name and this should be a string of the size of 500. I'm going to set it to required and I'm going to go ahead and click on create. And now another column we need is a spatial column. So let's go ahead and see how that works. So I'm going to go ahead and click on create column. I'm going to say the name should be location because we are going to store the location of the store. And in the type, we have three new types here, which is point, line, and polygon. So point represents a set of coordinates. So a single dot in a map is a point and that's what this represents. So if you have a pair of coordinates, you can store that in point. Line means it's gonna be two sets of coordinates. So you can have two pairs of coordinates which represent a line. This is good if you want to describe routes or something like that. Polygon can have multiple points and it is best used to describe an area. So if you have an area which you do not want to deliver to, you can check if the user provided area falls under this polygon or not. So yeah, for this video, we only need the point one. So I'm going to go ahead and select point and set it to required and go ahead and create this. Perfect. Now we have our required columns. We have ID, we have name and location, which is a point column. It has this new logo. And now we can go ahead and integrate this in our project. All right, so let's take a look at the app we have built using spatial columns. So this is a delivery store locator. All you have to do as a user is to point anywhere in the map. For example, if I want anything to be delivered at this point, I can go ahead and check availability. And at that point, I will get that there's two stores nearby. And if I choose a point which is very, very, very far away, for example, somewhere around here and go and check availability, it's going to say no stores available in your area. It's going to be only able to find stores within New York, within this specific block. And uh, it's gonna show two stores. I have configured it so that it's only gonna show you stores within the 10 mile radius. And you can go ahead and manage your stores here, which is definitely not something you should be showing user side. But since this is a test application, I have this specific panel where you can go ahead and set store locations. So I can go ahead and click on add store. And now I can simply just go ahead and uh, for example, let's go into Bayon. I don't know how to pronounce this and near this Broadway, I want to add a new store. I'm just going to say uh, Broadway. I'm going to click on add store. Perfect. And now that store is added here. Now, if I just go into Broadway here and if I just go ahead and randomly click on any point here, which is ov obviously near Broadway and I go ahead and click on check availability, it's going to give me all three stores because yeah, apparently all of those are in range. But yeah, you see Broadway here, which is 1.6 kilometer away. Let's try to take it a little bit further and check. Yeah, now you only have Broadway in region. So it's going to check all the stores which are in the 10 mile radius and going to show those to you in the available stores section. So how did we make this? Did we make like some complex logic to fetch what are the stores in the 10 miles radius? No, nope, we use spatial columns. So let's go ahead and dive into the code and see what we exactly did here. All right, so this is a Next.js project and we are at the appwrite.ts file which is located inside the lib folder which has the appwrite configuration which sets the endpoint project and key, which you can obviously get from the app right console. We are only going to interact with the database in the backend in this project because I wanted to keep things simple and separated for you to understand better. So I have this API folder where everything related to our logic is stored and everything else in this project is completely UI. So let's go ahead and take a look at the store route. Now this route supports three methods. We have get, 
give a post and we have delete. These are obviously used to get all the stores. So we do tablesdb.list rows, we pass in the database ID, we pass in the table ID and we get all the stores and we just pass it as JSON which the front end then uses its magic to show it to the user. Then we have post and here we check all the stuff, we validate if we have gotten everything. So this latitude and longitude is something which is coming from the map. We just added a store and previously in this video and the map is just sending the latitude and longitude to the server. Finally, we are just having name and in location, we are passing longitude and latitude as an array. So AppRite database will take this and store it in the best way possible. Remember that the first one should be longitude and the second one should be latitude. And these correspond with the columns that we made. So name is the name column and the location is the location point column. Finally, we just send in the data we just created and then we have a delete one which just deletes the store we just created before. So yeah. That's the very basic CRUD operations and stuff. But now we are talking about querying. How do you find out if the location that user gave you is within the 10 mile radius of any store? So let's just go ahead into the check route. Here's where everything happens. So just ignore this function. The cal calculate distance function is basically for the front end to show distances. You don't necessarily need this. I just wanted to show that to make things easy to understand. And this function is also AI generated. So yeah, so in the get route, we are taking latitude and longitude the user provided. Again, the map is going to give the form and the form is going to send these to the server and we are validating everything. And finally, we are doing tables db dot list rows. We are passing database IDs. We are passing the table ID. Finally, we are passing a query, which is query dot distance less than. This is going to filter resources where attribute is at a distance less than a specified value from a given coordinate. So we, we are just going to pass in the coordinate it's given by the user which is longitude and latitude format and we're going to pass in a meter value here 16,000 meters roughly translate around 10 miles not exactly and the final attribute true which says that hey this value is actually meters so this query is going to help you get all the stores which are in the 10 mile radius of the point given by the user and finally we are just running this logic to calculate distance and stuff you don't necessarily have to do this and we are just sending this back as json to the front end which then goes ahead and renders the list of the stores to the user very simple if you store the coordinates using string you might have to like get all the strings in the database or do some very very complex queries to pass all of that and make sense out of it and spatial columns just help you get rid of all of that complexity so yeah that's it for this video we hope that spatial columns is a really useful feature for all the projects that rely on massive amount of geographical data and i also want to know your thoughts about this do you have any project ideas in mind which would really benefit from spatial columns let me know that in the comments down below so yeah i'll see you guys in the next one